Hi everyone. Uh, so in these videos for this week, we're going to be looking at a practice version um, of exam two to kind of get you started and stuff like that. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna have two parts uh, to the exam just like last time. Uh, this part will be question one. You'll have 30 minutes for this part. Uh, since question one is a little bit longer, you'll only have one question. Um, and then question two and three are together for 30 minutes. Um, remember that once you do one question, you can't go back. So make sure to finish the question before moving on. Um, this question two should be easier than question three. So um, I tried to make it a little easier so you have a little more time for question three um, and you shouldn't worry as much. But let's start off with question one um, and kind of go from there. So here um, we're starting at, uh, so here in our question, we have, so, oh, just like last time, I'm not going to be uploading these notes. Uh, this is this video is all you kind of get. Um, okay, so we're starting at an with an atom standing at zero. So an atom standing at zero. So here I'm gonna think of some atom and it's standing at zero. Uh, so here I'll put a zero to kind of show there's my atom. And it moves forward by one spot. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna have spots here. It moves forward by one spot with probability one eighth. And it moves forward by two spots with probability one sixteenth. So this is one sixteenth. And it moves backward by one with probability 13 out of 16. So here we can actually go backwards by 13 out of 16. All right, so it's asking what is the standard deviation on the location of the atom after 100 movements? Uh, we're assuming that each movement is a dependent. We have to use random variables and we want to give four decimal points. Okay, so here, since we have to use random variables, let's start off right away. Um, we have a hundred movements to do, so we'll set each one different. So we'll let xi uh, be the number of spots, number of spots, uh, the atoms move on the ith time, or a ninth uh, ith uh, movement, on the ith move, I guess. Uh, why is, how did this get blurry? Okay, there we go, that was weird. Um, and so basically first what we wanna do is figure out um, the probability of just doing one of them, right? So what's the probability, what's the expected value of just one movement. Uh, so what we have is the expected value of xi. Uh, this is going to be the sum of all x, x times the probability that xi is equal to x. Um, so here I can move either uh, plus one, plus two, or minus one. So I can either do minus one, and the probability here is 13 out of 16, uh, plus I can move plus one, so one, times one eighth, uh, and then I have the second option. I can move, I can move forward by two. So I have two times one over 16. Um, technically, actually, I'm gonna do this a little slower because as always, I kind of want you all to um, write things a little slower. Uh, so let me actually, we're gonna remove this. Uh, and I'm gonna write this a little slower and we're gonna write minus one times P of X I is equal to minus one. Uh, plus one times p of x i is equal to one, plus two times p of x i is equal to two. And here we can actually plug in at this point. Um, so x i, this gives me 13 out of 16. Here we have one eighth, and here we have uh, two times one sixteen. Uh, so if we calculate this, here we have minus 13 over 16. I'm going to make a common denominator right away. So this is 2 over 16. This is 2 over 16. Uh, minus 13 plus 4. Why is... Okay, minus 13 plus 4 is minus 9. So I get minus 9 over 16, which means my expected value is minus 0 0.5625. In other words, I expect to move backwards. Um, so next we're going to look at, well, we're trying to figure out the standard deviation, right? We want standard deviation, um, which means I also need to figure out the second uh, value. So I need E 
um, of xi squared, right? So here, let's remember what this function is. We have x squared, p of x i is equal to x. Um, so in this case, um, I should make more room. Um, and so from here, what we have is we're going to start plugging things in. So here we have minus 1 squared, with a minus 1, plus 1 squared x i is equal to 1 plus 2 squared p of x i is equal to 2. So plugging things here, here we'll get 1 times 13 out of 16, plus 1 times 1 eighth, uh, plus 4 times 1 over 16. Uh, so what we end up having is 13 out of 16, plus again, I'll make a common denominator of 16, uh, plus 4 out of 16. So we get 13 plus 2 plus 4, that's 19, if I'm not mistaken, 19 out of 16. So our expected value of xi squared is 1.1875. Uh, so what this tells me um, is that the variance of xi, which is e of xi squared minus e of xi squared, this is 19 over 16 minus um, minus 9 over 16 squared. Um, so what does this give me? Um, I have 19 over 16 minus 81 over 256. This is equal to 223 over 256. This you can just plug into a calculator um, and you get 0 0.87109375. So this is just um, one term, right? And the question is really asking, well, um, we want to know after 100 movements. So where does the 100 move in? So in this case, what we need to do is we need to set up a new variable. So let x uh, be the location, location of the atom after 100 movements. Um, now, at this point, we have to use our one of our laws. Um, what we have in essence is x is equal to x1 plus x2 all the way up to x100, right? So I need to state how many things I'm adding here. Um, and so what we have is by the square root law, by square root law, root law, since, and you need to say why you can use this, why can we use this? Since every movement is independent, right? It doesn't matter what happens each time it's independent of everything before. And each xi um, is equal in distribution. So they all have the same distribution. What this means is we can use the square root law. This means that SD, the standard deviation of x, is equal to the square root of 100 times the standard deviation of any one of them. Now the standard deviation of any one of them we actually know. So the square root of 100 is 10, that's easy. Uh, and standard deviation of xi is square root of the var of xi. Uh, var of xi we actually just calculated, right? This is just 0 0.87 blah blah blah. So we have the square root of 0 0.87109375. Um, and this basically gives me um, my formula. So I just have to um, solve this um, and I get 9.33324033. Um, another way to look at this, if you didn't want to plug in the number here, you can also do 10 times the square root of 223 over 256. Uh, 256, um, you can kind of remember is 16 squared. Uh, so this actually helps us bring this out fairly quick. This is 10 over 16 times the square root of 223. Um, so here we can reduce this as well. Uh, so the, these are both okay. Um, this is the value I want. Remember you need at least four decimal places and please round correctly. Uh, so that's question one. Um, we'll look at question two in the next video. So I will see you then.